Hello and welcome to my music room. My name is Gavin Fish. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Light Harmonic. And the reason I'm making this video is to help you to understand how to set up Light Harmonic's DaVinci DAC with your uh, sound system. Uh, specifically, I want to go through the process of connecting a computer by USB to our DAC. Now this video is in no way a comprehensive tutorial on computer audio. But what I do want to do is teach you the basics of how to set up a Macintosh computer as your music source and then how to connect it to our DaVinci DAC. The first thing I want to do is look at the connection panel on the back of DaVinci. As you can see there are seven connectors. There's one USB input, one AES EBU input, one SPDIF input, and then there are two balanced XLR outputs and two single-ended RCA outputs. In this demonstration I'm going to be using the USB input and the balanced outputs. First I connect the left XLR output, followed by the right, and then I connect the USB input. Once you've done this it's time to set up your computer as your music source. I've chosen to use this Macintosh mini computer as my music server. I like this platform because it's very, very easy to use, very easy to set up. All you have to do initially is give it some power and connect your USB cable. You'll also have to connect up the monitor and the keyboard and mouse, but I assume you already know how to do that. Now just turn it on and we'll start to configure the software. When you boot up your Mac computer, it's going to look something like this. This is your desktop here, and down at the bottom is what we call the dock. The dock is a place where it shows programs that are currently running or programs that are frequently used. Now the program that I would like to introduce you to to help you set up your computer as a music server is available in Apple's App Store. So we're going to go there real quick, and we are going to search for a piece of software called BitPerfect. If you just search on BitPerfect, there will be one result that comes back and it's showing uh, in the App Store right now as installed on my computer because indeed it is installed on my computer. But I wanted to show you how quickly and easily you can get a very good piece of software uh, that is audiophile grade and will help you to, uh, to turn your computer into a music server. The other thing I wanted to point out is look right here at its price. It's ten dollars. It's probably the least expensive piece of audio gear you'll ever buy. Now I'm not saying that uh, BitPerfect is the only piece of software that you can use. What I'm saying is it's one of the simplest and for this reason it comes highly recommended by by us here at, at Light Harmonic. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start BitPerfect. Now uh, before I do I want to say that I again have my computer connected by USB to DaVinci DAC. DaVinci is connected using my XLR cables to the rest of my computer. It's gone into my preamp and uh, my entire uh, hi-fi system is turned on right now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on BitPerfect and a couple of things are going to happen. The first thing that happens is up here next to the clock, right up here there's a little icon that shows up, a little BitPerfect icon. Also, you'll notice the iTunes started. Let's take them one at a time. First up here, this is the only indication that you'll ever get that BitPerfect is operating. If you click on it, there's a menu that you can, uh, that you can choose from. And I want to show you the Preferences menu. So I click on Preferences, and this is the, the Preferences pane. There are four different sections to it. The General section, Sound section, iTunes, and Advanced. In the general area, the thing that you want to look at is the audio output device. You need to set that to Light Harmonic DaVinci. It's important to note that DaVinci is a completely, um, it, it's a USB 2.0 compatible device. As Macintosh's OS X software operating system is a USB 2.0 compatible operating system, there's no need to install any type of driver or any type of software to uh, control DaVinci DAC. 
it will automatically add. In the Windows uh, environment, because Windows isn't perfectly compatible with the USB 2.0 uh, system, uh, there is a driver that you will have to install and you can download that from lightharmonic.com. This is one of the reasons why I suggest the Macintosh, uh, especially for beginning computer audio files, is because it's just so easy to use. There's no uh, really difficult uh, software setup. The other thing that I want to show you here is that uh, integer mode is a selection that you can make to turn on and off. Now, integer mode uh, is more hardware dependent on your computer, less dependent on your DAC. On the computer that I'm using right now, I do not use integer mode. When I do use integer mode, uh, there seems to be buffering problems with the computer and the music will skip. On your computer, it, that may not be true. So uh, I suggest that you, you play around with this setting to see what is best in, in your system. Also, the buffer size. On my system, the buffer size seems to work best at 1024 megabytes, but you could choose anything from this uh, menu, and as you play music, you can play around with that setting to see what is optimal for you. On the sound uh, pane, I use uh, all of the uh, defaults inside BitPerfect. There is one setting that I encourage you to play with, and that is this Use Maximum Device Buffer Size setting. Uh, again, this is more computer dependent than DAC dependent. With, uh, with my computer, the audio seems to work better if I select Use Maximum Device Buffer Size, but that's something that you can select on your own uh, and you can play with on your computer. Going over to iTunes real quick, I keep everything default. Uh, notice that Start iTunes on Startup is selected, which is why iTunes did indeed start when I started up BitPerfect. And on the Advanced pane, I keep everything the default. These two uh, items are not selected, and both of these sliders are slid all the way over to the right. With that, you can close the Preferences pane, and you are ready to play music as a computer audio file. Now I've selected from my uh, from my library of music one song each from the varying sample rates of DaVinci DAC uh, that are compatible with DaVinci DAC. Remember that DaVinci is a 32-bit, 384K non-oversampling DAC. So uh, if I select this top song, Norwegian Wood by Art Land, I either double-click it or I click it and push play. I should start to hear some music. Now I'm standing in my listening room right now, so you can probably hear that music in the background. Uh, but real quick, you should, let's take a look at the display for DaVinci DAC. You'll see that it shows that this is a 384K sample rate song. And indeed, if you look at the uh, playlist here, where I'm, uh, where I'm pointing, this is a 384K song. If I switch on the fly to this Haydn String Quartet, which is a 352.8 kilohertz sample rate song, uh, we look at DaVinci DAC again and it'll display 352.8. This is pretty important. One of the great advantages of using BitPerfect is that it can select, I'm gonna turn this down, it can select the sample rate on the fly. That's something that iTunes can't do on its own. So that's what makes iTunes on its own not an audio file grade interface for your music. Let's just go through a couple of these and, uh, and look at DaVinci detecting the sample rate.
Okay, so I think you've gotten a pretty good feel on how to use a Macintosh computer as a music server, connecting it through DaVinci DAC and uh, becoming a uh, professional <laughs> computer audiophile, or at least you're well on your way. If you have any questions about anything we've covered in this video or any other questions regarding using a Mac computer as a music server or DaVinci DAC, there are several ways you can contact us. Feel free to call us at the office at 888-842-5988 or email us at service at lightharmonic.com. You can also go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash lightharmonic. You can also go to facebook.com slash groups slash computer audiophilia to ask any number of questions from a big group of very experienced computer audiophiles. Thanks for watching.